All right, guys, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk to you about file permissions in Linux. Now, I'll admit right now that this takes a little bit of time getting used to, but it is definitely worth it. One of the most important concepts in Linux. So let me show you what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm just going to list the contents of this directory so we have some files to look at. Now, whenever we're looking at these files and directories, we can probably figure out most of this stuff. Okay, the name, the date, uh, okay. We're getting to this part right here. What the heck is this crap? Um, okay, I see a bunch of R, W, some minuses, and Ds. Okay, no idea what that is. Well, those are all the file permissions, and each file has its own permissions. So let's learn what all of these symbols mean and I actually typed this right before this tutorial because this what I'm typing is just an easier way to see this. All I did is there are different sections of file permissions and instead of having everything bunched together I just added a space to space them out. So this first symbol which would be either a minus or a D in all of these what the first symbol means is if what you're looking at is a file it's gonna have a minus if this thing is a directory it's gonna have a D so you see that all of these are files and like bacon right here that's a file and all of these are directories movies and other so that's why they're dir the directories have a D and all the files have minuses alright well that was easy so let's go on to the next thing well all of the stuff right here is actually pretty easy to understand once you understand that this isn't um, don't look at it as nine different characters it's actually broke up into three different groups so three then three then three now the three letters that you can have or symbols are R W and X so let's just break this down one group at a time so for every file there are three things that you can do to it you can read it you can write it or you can execute it. Now we already know what reading and writing it means. Execute means if you ever have an executable then you can do that too. So on a computer you have files those are all the things that you can do to it. Alright so those are the permissions for the file but why do we have three different chunks? Don't we only need to give it one set of permissions? Well I know I didn't talk to you guys about the owner of a file or groups or different users on the computer but that's why you need three different ones the first group are the permissions for the owner of the file the second chunk of permissions right here is for the group and this last one is for everyone else so not the owner not the group just you know like global regular users so in this example right here what this would mean is this would be for a file since it has a dash or a hyphen whatever you want to call it the owner of the file can read write and execute it the group can read and write it but they can't execute it and everyone else all the normal users they can just read it so maybe this is something for like um, a file on a website those would be you know a pretty good example of their permissions and what I'm about to teach you right now is probably easier if you guys have a little cheat sheet to look at so let me type this so when I'm explaining it you guys can see what's going on so the letter U is for user and that would be the uh, like the main owner of the file the the one that usually has the most privileges so G this stands for the group and O these are the people with usually the least privileges these are just other people and I'll say like uh, from the outside world. So just keep these characters in mind right here because now I want to teach you how you would let me space this so you guys can see the whole thing. All right. So what if we want to change the permissions for let's say this bacon file right here? So we want to say that we want to change it for normal users from the outside world and right now as we can see they can only read the file well let's say that we wanted to um I don't know have them be able to write it for some reason well to change the permissions you use chmod and then it takes um well three pieces of information the first one is 
what group are you trying to change the permissions for? Well, we're just trying to change it for other people, the outside world. And then it's saying, okay, what do you want to do? Well, we just want to give them the right permission. And now it just takes what file, which is bacon, and check it out. So now if I do list L again, the outside world can now not only read the file like it was before, but they can also write it. Now, if you ever want to take those permissions away, write the group, what permissions you want to take away, and what file. So check it out. We just took it away. Now let me hit clear and clear that stuff out. All right, that's simple enough, but imagine that you wanted to, you know, change the permissions around for, I don't know, maybe the user, the group, and other people. That's going to take a bunch of commands, and, you know, it's not going to take that long, maybe a minute, but we don't have time for that. So I'll show you guys the incredibly easy way, and I'll give you guys a little cheat sheet right here to easily set all of the permissions for every group at once and you guys are gonna love me after this so I'll give you guys an example like a ch mod what you can do is something like a 754 and then the file name which is bacon so in this order I'll write a 754 represents the individual permissions for and I'll say in this order um, yeah I guess that's the best way to do it so user group and other so this first number right here is for the user the second one is for the group and the third one is for other so you know just kind of the way that you would think of it so alright that was easy enough so we're given seven to the user five to the group four to the other alright so what the heck do these numbers mean well, for, I'll just say, um, stands for read. Let me copy this so I don't have to type it again. All right. So whenever you see the number four, it stands for read. So we are giving others the ability to read this. Now, two, whenever you see a two, if, even if it, even though it wasn't in this example, this means write. So if we were to change this to two, then we would give the others the permission to write it. So let me change that back to four. And whenever you see a one, this stands for execute. And guys, I know that this is kind of overwhelming right now, but after you see this a couple times, you actually get the hang of it. And most people don't even understand what this is. So you guys are going to be like pros. All right. So four, whenever you see a four, it means we're giving this group the ability to read two means write and one means execute now zero why the heck aren't you typing because I got num lock on all right zero stands for no permissions so anytime you would see a dash like before that would just mean a zero all right so that's simple enough zero one two or four for each individual group but why is the seven right here what the heck is a seven well this is the last thing I'm going to teach you and this is where things get a little bit tricky whenever you see a seven what you're doing is you're combining all of these numbers so you can just give them so for example you can just give a group write permission or you can just give them read permission or what you can do is you can combine read and write and that would be six now whenever we see a seven that means for this group they have read write and execute permission so let's figure out what this thing means it means we're gonna change the privileges for bacon or their permissions so users which is the first one they have a seven so they can read write and execute it alright so group they have a five so what adds up to a five well they can read and execute it alright what about other people other people only have a four so that means that they can only read it. So I know that you're uh, like sitting there and be like, um, so, okay, I'm getting it now. Okay, that makes sense. Now, what you're gonna see a lot is something like this. And if you ever see chmod 777, 
bacon. This means that you're giving every group all their permissions to read, write, and execute it. So that, like I said, is a pretty common one. 777 means let anyone do whatever they want with this file. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's what all of the crap about file permissions are in Linux. Now you understand, so go out, um, you know, hack some computers, change your permissions, do whatever you want. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.